What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So in this one, we're going to be talking about a very significant bailout that is happening right now. Now, in addition to this, we're going to be going over the charts as usual, giving you guys everything you need to know going into the next couple of trading days and some specific things to be looking out for. Now, in addition to this, there is something going on right now that has not happened since 2008 that you guys absolutely need to be aware of. And again, when you think about the overall situation of this market right now, you have to ask yourself the question, Has have these really, really core and systemic issues been resolved or is this the result of a lot of speculation and maybe even a little bit of a bear market rally happening? And we're going to go over that here. But again, before we get into all of that information, if you do enjoy the information and analysis that I provide for you guys in these videos, make sure you go down and hit that like button. It costs you nothing to do it, but it really helps us out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people who actually want to learn. Now, again, if you guys do want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video. So let's get right into the charts over here. We're going to be looking at the SPY, the S&P 5. 500 ETF. Now, if you look at this chart on the daily time frame as we are doing right now, you have a little bit of a supply zone up here. We ended up retesting this yesterday and we fell back down below. The one thing that I want all of you guys to be very, very aware of is that earnings is going to be a very key contributing factor to these market movements over the next few weeks. We have Tesla after hours today. We have Snapchat tomorrow. We had Netflix yesterday. Next week is going to be crazy. So again, you have to look for how these companies are actually performing, especially the big S&P components, to give us an indication of, okay, this is how the overall market is reacting to these companies' earnings, and it could give us a little bit of a glimmer of hope to stay off of these new lows that we just made after CPI. Now, again, there is a lot of money to be made in these markets, everybody. You guys saw me on the live stream today talking about the algorithms. Um, the one that I'm running right now is up about 6.5% on the day. Uh, I posted those screenshots on Twitter, so go check those out if you guys are interested. But again, some of these other gains over here, shout out to all you guys who have actually come in taking trading seriously and really, really bought into this system right here. We have some 5% portfolio gains, 4% days over here. You guys are absolutely crushing it. I could not be more proud of you guys. If you do want to come in and join us, get access to all of these algorithms, live streams, alerts, curriculum videos, and all of the new stuff that we have coming, make sure you guys check out that link down below. But going forward here, the dollar was up a little bit today, so it does make sense that the market would be coming down a little bit. But here is what I want to really bring your guys' attention to. This is the 10-year treasury yield on the weekly time frame so looking at this right here we have made new 52 week highs but that's not all if you go back and see the last time that we were hanging out at these types of levels on the 10-year treasury and you go back and look down here june of 2008 now what do these high yields actually mean now you can use 10-year treasury yields or some of these bond yields to kind of sometimes track the flow of money in the market if you see bond yields going up well you that does mean that the prices of these bonds are going down, meaning there could be a lot of selling pressure in these government bonds, but where could that money be going? Typically, you would expect that to go back into the equity market, but that's not what's happening right now. When you come over and take a look at this article uh, over here from about a month ago, higher bond yields are bad news for the stock market and its investors, said certified financial planner Paul Winter, owner of Five Seasons Financial Planning in Salt Lake City. Higher bond yields create more competition for funds that may otherwise go into the stock market winter said going off of that concept of tina there is no alternative that we've been talking about for a while and with higher treasury yields used in the calculations to assess stocks whether those are the discount rates and the discounted cash flow models that we've also talked about a lot here analysts may reduce future expected cash flows if that happens the present values of those equities or in any equity that you're using these models on actually goes down so you can see a lot of analyst downgrades starting to come out not only based on the overall economic environment right now, the macroeconomic environment, but because these bond yields and the discount rates that are used in these discounted cash flow models are going up, which is going to decrease future values. But having these bond yields this high is not a good sign for the overall market here. And again, the one thing that I do really want to have you guys key in on here is the 30-year gilts over in the UK. Now, we're going to talk a little bit more about this uh, in the later half of this video here, but... Hopefully, you guys all understand by now, if you guys have been watching my videos, how important the UK and England, the Bank of England are to the overall, basically, 
markets of the entire world right now. We saw the Bank of England end up coming out and saying that they were going to go on that little quantitative easing spree up until about October 14th. And then they stopped that and we are still seeing these yields starting to sell off, meaning that somebody is buying these bonds still. Now, when you come over and take a look at some of the other things that have been going on with the Bank of England right now, this is where this bailout comes in. The UK Treasury to bail out the Bank of England's $11 billion quantitative easing losses. As we recently detailed, the uh, the new UK Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, faces the daunting hask, uh, task of closing a £40 billion pound gap uh, in the government's accounts. Sizable hole remains in the UK's public finances, but as Bloomberg reports, there are more holes for the UK Treasury to find cash for as it is set to transfer more than 11 billion pounds or 12.4 billion US dollars to the Bank of England this fiscal year to cover projected losses in its bond buying program. The capital transfer was detailed in an update here and it was actually listed under assistance to financial institutions payment to the Bank of England. Notably, this payment is also described as assistance to financial institutions, businesses and individuals under the proposed new changes. So they're kind of messing around with the wording of this here. Now, again, when they talk about businesses and individuals, they could be talking about the pension uh, the pension funds that they actually came in and tried to save. But what you have to think about here is that this situation is far from over, and we are about to get some potentially really, really high levels of volatility because of this right here. Bank of England confirms bond sales will begin November 1st. The entire situation here that was causing all of this volatility in the UK bond market was due to the yield skyrocketing, an overwhelming amount of selling pressure of these UK bonds, and these pension funds getting margin called. So the Bank of England had to come in, step in, and buy the bonds. But now they have to offload those bonds. They've already announced that they're stopping the bond purchases. Now they've announced that they're actually going to be selling these bonds, adding to the selling pressure, and there's going to be nobody there to backstop a yield move like this to the upside. That is where things get very interesting. The pound will lose value, the dollar could start to appreciate, and our markets will be affected by that to the downside. So that is something that you guys need to be aware of going into these next couple of weeks, especially with earnings season, midterm elections coming up, and the overall volatility of the news coming out every single day in the market. Now, again, we do have a couple of other pieces of news that we need to look out for going into the rest of this week. We have jobless claims coming out tomorrow, so we are going to be seeing the jobs report, uh, the manufacturing index, existing home sales, leading economic indicators. Then at 145, Fed Governor Lisa Cook is going to be speaking. So we still have some news coming out, but with the market's really going to be bracing for is earnings. So that is mainly going to wrap up this video here, guys. Um, and in short, with the bond yields and everything that is going on with the market right now, I want you guys to make sure that you're asking yourself these questions and really, really being careful about who you're listening to on social media. There are so many people out there right now that are blowing smoke up your you know what, trying to spread hopium, and it's just not the reality of all of these situations right now. The market is not in a good spot. The economy is not in a good spot. Can we see some rallies to the upside? Yes. But are those rallies going to be short-lived because of the overall situations that we're in with high inflation, real estate's about to come down, unemployment's about to come down, growth isn't looking too good, the UK situation, Russia and Ukraine, uh, the Chinese and Taiwan news, OPEC, US SPR drain? Yes. All of these things are pointing to more volatility in the markets coming. So guys, that is really gonna wrap this up here. If you did enjoy the information and analysis that I provided for you guys in this video, make sure you go down and hit that like button. It costs you nothing to do it, but it really helps us out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people who want to learn. Other than that, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.